Hey guys, how's it going? Happy, um, happy hump day. It's Wednesday. Um, and please forgive me. I had to really quickly make, it doesn't look that pretty. Um, I, I, I have had a weird morning. And um, I came home because I was feeling queasy. You know what it's like when I say queasy, I mean like uneasy. I didn't mean to rhyme, but I just, my stomach was feeling like, wow. I had my protein shake this morning and I was feeling just, I don't know, like I didn't have enough in my stomach and I'm getting ready to work out and I'm like, I gotta eat something. And I certainly didn't feel like putting some salmon in my stomach right now would do it. Sometimes when I get that queasy feeling, I need something like carby. Um, and the only thing I had was oatmeal. I need to go grocery shopping. I'm telling you guys, the number one thing that annoys me is grocery shopping because it takes so much time. I'm literally on the move to find someone to do my grocery shopping for me. And you might think, that's stupid. Hold on. No, it's not. Meaning, it might sound like, oh, I'm being a diva because I want someone to do my shopping for me. It's not it at all. When you're in my position, the company growing the way it is and really needing to be very proactive and very judicious with how I spend my time, the fact that if I wanted to go grocery shopping right now, I have to leave here. By the time I got to Trader Joe's, I need to go to Trader Joe's. And then I don't like, trade. no offense, I don't like Trader Joe's produce. So I would need to go to another store for produce. So it'd be half an hour there, half an hour back. That's an hour. Probably 25, 30 minutes at that place. That's an hour and a half. Going to the next place is another 15 minutes plus another half an hour. So that's another, um, what's that? Two, you know, that would end up probably being a total of close to three hours, even if that's all I did. Um, three hours out of my day, that's a lot of time to take out of my day. Um, I don't have time for that. And then, then you get home and then you have to put everything away. So then that's adding, you know, another 10 or 15 minutes. And I don't have, I mean, I can't do that. I schedule my day. My days are like, mornings are for workouts. Um, and then I've got afternoon schedule. And most of my afternoons, like yesterday, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Then I finish at 6. And then if I'm not going to go do a workout or a hot yoga class, then I'm working. And I'm working until like 8 or 9 o'clock at night on stuff. I mean, I, the list that I have in there to, to attack is insane. So all that to say, um, I, I've needed an assistant for a while, but now I really, for stuff like this, because that, that's exactly what happens, is I run out of food, I run out of stuff that I need, and I'll sit here and go, oh, I really need to go to the grocery store. I don't feel like it, I don't have time. So then I'm like, what can I make do with? And because I'm moving, I also don't have a normal stock in my cabinets. In fact, most of the cabinets back here are not stocked. They're packed. Whew. All that to say, so I'm having um, a little bit of oatmeal, which I'm not normally having in my diet right now. Um, but I'm having half of the serving. So this is a serving of oatmeal with one scoop of the egg protein powder. The mutant is in the kitchen now. Um, here's what's interesting about the egg protein. Remember I've shared with you guys there were some other protein powders before I eliminated whey? And I was like, I noticed that when you put them in oatmeal, for those of you that have oatmeal and protein powder a lot, it made the oatmeal more watery. This actually makes the um, oatmeal much drier. It soaks up the oatmeal. Just an observation. Tastes good. Now I feel much better. A couple things. I was going to take my measurements um, because Val does have me doing, and we're gonna do another three weeks of Bikini Body Express and then she's changing my workouts. So we're not changing my workouts um, with the exception of a couple things, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but I did take my measurements and just so that you know, I have not lost any weight on my neck. Fine with that. Um, chest has been exactly the same, so measuring under the chest. Waist, I have lost an inch. Oh, I've lost, wait, that's chest. I've lost an inch on my waist, and then below my waist, the next two inches below, I have lost an inch and a quarter. Um, the next point, I have lost an inch. The next hip point down, 
um, on my thigh, my right thigh I've lost an inch, my left thigh I've lost nothing. My left thigh is smaller than my right thigh, which is bizarre. So my, my uh, honestly, when I first took my measurements, my right thigh was two inches heavier than my left. I wonder if that has something to do with the fact of my left leg is longer and maybe I, I don't know. Um, and then my bicep, I have not lost any weight there. Um, and you might go, why do you want to lose your bicep? I'm not trying to lose that, but you guys, let's be honest, I have a good deal of fat still on my arms. What is that? Um, which is going to be nice, because the more that I lose fat on my arms, the more all of this is going to look even better, you know? There's still plenty of stuff I can pinch there to get to my last nerve. Um, but let's see, let's continue. I feel, I actually talked with Belle yesterday, um, and it was just great to talk to her because she's awesome, but she's just so sincerely excited about my results. Um, and, you know, I told her what I was doing for cardio. It was interesting because she said, I'd really rather that you not do plyo for your cardio. And I suggest that if you like running, you do that. And I was like, I don't know why. I need to reread this. Perhaps I was reading things wrong. I thought that it, the cardio, you know, would be better for me to do plyo. And she's all about hit at intervals, but not doing plyo necessarily, um, especially if you're trying to lean your legs out. Now, I don't have a problem. My goal, I'm not trying to have stick thin, thin, stick thin legs. First of all, I never could. Um, I have very muscular um, upper legs. My calves are really muscular. Martin, you were coming in. That. I have really muscular legs, and I'm fine with that. However, you know, I do carry fat um, in my saddlebags area. I've always had that. So leaning out those legs, or, or leaning out the fat on top of this beautiful muscle, yeah, I'm, f I'm fine with that. So, you know, while you know, there, there's a lot of information out there about can women get too bulky, can they not get too bulky. You can definitely be building muscle and and um, I have a tendency to put on muscle very easily. I'll put it that way. Um, I mean, you've noticed. I have no problem building muscle. My problem or my challenge has been, especially over the past couple of years with this um, perimenopausal gift from heaven that I've received. Um, is, is losing the fat. It's never been about developing muscle. And in fact, it's interesting, I went running last night, which that's my segue. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I went to the track and I set out to do three miles and, you know, planning to do walk, run, walk, run to get myself back into running. And I was really pleasantly surprised how much I could um, run where I really haven't been running a lot at all lately. And I certainly by no means can say that I've been back running regularly. Um, so the thing that's, that's interesting about me, um, you can ask Jay, my trainer, you can ask Val, you can, you know, ask anybody that's gone running, Amy might be able to testify to this. I don't have, um, the, the things that stop me up <laughs> with my training are in running, it's, it's my breathing. It's never the strength of my legs, never about endurance, it's all about my breathing. If I get my breathing to the point where I can breathe the right way naturally instead of tending to hold my breath. When I focus too hard, I hold my breath. Sometimes even when I vlog, you guys, I can do this. Like I, I start making a point and technically I've taken in a breath and I've stopped breathing. You know, pay, pay attention to when you do that. If you do that when you run, you're not getting oxygen to all the areas. I don't know if that's exactly the right way to phrase it, but you're, you're, you're essentially kind of, that's what causes the cramping. And when I get cramps, that's what makes me stop. It's not about my legs hurting. It's not about, um, you know, I've just heard a lot of runners say that. And, and I remember when Amy and I started running, she would have to wear compression tights. She'd have to do a lot of icing. And I would get home and be like, I'm okay. My whole thing about running has always been the breathing. It's not about the ability to run, the ability to go faster. It's all about breathing. Um, the only limitation I have, and I've shared this with you guys, with some of the things I have not been able to do yet, pull-ups, um, and then some going heavier at home without a trainer have been with my grip, the strength in my grip. Uh, when I'm doing pull-ups, you know, my the strength in my grip is not at where it should be. Um, a lot of if I'm doing, you know, deadlifts or if I'm doing um, underhand grip rows, whatever, it's it's my rip, my grip. See how dark I just got in here? My grip is what will give out first. 
Um, so those are some, it's just, it's interesting to me to observe how we're so individual, you know, where one person's really strong, another person can be really weak. Every time I go to a yoga class, I find it very interesting to see what it is that I can do. Um, it, it's not challenging for me. I don't mean it that way. It's not like a real problem. But you try to put me into, what is that, half moon pose? And I am like, and I'm telling you, like I'm practicing at it all the time here. But I, you know, my feet tend to go like this. And, and to do that pose effectively, you've got to be able to have your foot here so that when you tilt up and you know put your arm up, you're not going to fall over. I'm telling you guys, I am literally like a, a weeble who wobbles and falls down in that pose. Um, my hips are very tight, so a lot of the moves where you're stretching back, like if you're kneeling um, and then you, you're in a kneeling pose and then you go all the way back, I can't do it. I have to put all these props underneath my back because otherwise it hurts my hips or, or that hip flexor area. So I just find it really interesting um, how we're, we're so unique and we all have strengths and weaknesses everywhere and that's what you work on. You can't compare yourself, um, it's a big thing for me, you can't compare yourself to a body type that's unachievable like I did for so many years going, I want to have Jennifer Garner's body. Uh, never going to happen. Jennifer Garner does not have this going on. Never will. Unless she appoints a surgeon to help her with that. Um, uh, you also can't make an hourglass figure turn into um, a very flat chested, I'm not saying this in a bad way, that's what I always wanted, flat chested, man hip, skinny butt type of a girl. It's never going to happen. You've got to accept your shape and you've also got to accept like what are your limitations and work on that. That's something I finally got in this crazy head of mine. Like accept where I am, be nice to myself along the way, and I'm starting to make progress. I mean, do you know how exciting it was for me to, to um, record these um, uh, statistics or whatever? And here's another thing, guys. If you're, not, if you're not keeping track, this is one of the big things that I've learned that's helping me. If you're not tracking yourself, if you're not tracking your workouts and making sure that you're getting your workouts in, and if you're not tracking your results, Honest to God, probably I could look in the mirror and see that I was getting somewhere, but it makes it a lot, it's hitting home a lot more for me to go, wow, you know, on this date, this is how much my, my chest was, this is how much my waist was, this is how much my, and, and now it's this. So you, you see it on paper, it's not like, yeah, I think I'm losing weight or I think my clothes are looser, you know, when you see it and you track it and then you know, um, and it's on paper, I don't know, it's just, it gives it a lot more power. And it certainly is motivating. Um, as I was telling Val yesterday, I really don't feel, I'm not walking around going, Ugh. occasionally a thought of a brownie pops in my head, but I'm not walking around obsessing about what I want to eat. I'm um, obsessing about how great my next workout's gonna be, which is what I'm gonna be doing in just a few minutes. Um, so that said, I'm gonna pick my workout, I'm gonna do it. Um, but back to what Val was saying, so she suggested for my cardio that uh, running would be better for me, and I embraced that because I, I told her, I said, you know, I run in the past and then I stopped because I didn't like the pressure that I put on myself so quickly to train for a half marathon. But yet, you know, now I've been around all of these, all of my people in Fitfluential, and I've seen them get, you know, so excited and do these great fun marathon events and I part of me somebody said to me in one of my conversations the past couple weeks they're like why don't you at least do one put it on your bucket list um, and I'm like yeah you know what I could see myself doing one and I do like to run I just I don't know that I could ever become one of these people that's doing marathons or half marathons all throughout the year because I like to just run when I want but we'll see all that said so Val doesn't want me training for any kind of half marathon now, but I am going to be running for my cardio, which I like. And I had a really good time yesterday. I definitely ran into the, um, the cramping issues. So working on my breathing, but I did that before. I worked on my breathing and that's what helped me get up to the point where first I got up to, you know, doing half an hour straight of running. Then I got to 40 minutes and I got to 45 minutes. And then I remember I was in Lake Tahoe and I did my first hour long run and I was like, so, you know, I'm not putting myself on a timetable. I'm doing this when my body's ready for it. And that's when you have success, is when you, you know, do it for the right reasons and do it in the right way and, you know, take your time. It's it's exciting for me to see my results and to go, wow, you know, this is what I did in three weeks and, and whatever. But I'm not stopping. I'm not doing this program and going, oh, 
you know, I'm not, in, I'm not a size six in three weeks. I'm done. I'm going to stop. This is what I'm doing for life. But it is fun to measure it along the way. So all that said, now the sun's back out. I'm having the guy come do my water heater today. Last little thing. You guys saw my last vlog, right? About how my weekend was like a, just a virtual shitstorm of stuff. Excuse my French. Um, I came home last night, so I went and did my run in the evening. Wasn't feeling like working out. Went and did my run. Of course, I just talked to Val on the phone, I, and I'm like, oh, I'm so doing my cardio. And she's like, that's right, Kelly. I know you don't feel like it. And I hung up, and I'm like, the devil in me was like, no, I can do it in the morning. But I went, and then I get home, no hot water. No hot water. No hot water. So clearly, remember I was wondering, can I like not replace the water heater? Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's just starting to break down. Clearly, it's good that he's coming today because taking a cold shower last night was not my definition of pleasure. I gotta go. See you tomorrow.